Good evening. It is Monday, the 14th of August, 2023. It is 8.30 p.m. UK time. It is 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because both of my guests are in that time zone in completely different countries. Uh, we've got uh, Malong from the Asian Metrics in Panama coming up. And then we've also got Sean the Vinyl Villa, who's based in Canada. And I'm in the UK. So three countries, three is the magic number, three DJs connected. Uh, I've known both of them for a little while. We've been chatting. Uh, both have been on my shows, but I thought it'd be cool to bring them together on one show. And we had a chat about some potential topics and we came up with sort of Calypso Caribbean music. So I think it's going to be a, a very interesting show. So without further ado, here are my guests, Malong and Sean. Hello. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Hey, Christos. How's it going? Hey. Hi, Sean. Good. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's cool um, because you guys obviously haven't met until just now. We've had a little bit of a WhatsApp group going for uh, a short yeah, while. Yeah, that's it. We've been cool. chatting, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, been it's cool to sort of bring people interact. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, I love bringing people together that you think I think are gonna get on or have got into, into similar styles of music or or whatever. You know, so it's cool to do this. Um, right, I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with a little mini bio of each of you. I know you've been on my shows before, but if anyone is watching this for the first time. Uh, and hasn't seen you before just a sort of really short by a couple of minutes of you know you what you're about and uh, we'll go from there so Malong do you want to go first sure why not yeah hi Malong here um yeah I've been on a, a bunch of shows with you on coffee and donuts on 45 day uh but uh yeah so I'm a French national living in Panama um I belong to a collective called the Asymmetrics and uh we are sort of in between paris panama amsterdam brussels morocco there's a bunch of us uh, a bit everywhere um we're all diggers of of uh, music of all genres really and um yeah that, that's what i try to represent you know in my sets in in general you know just being as versatile as i can we have a lot of love for the 60s and 70s but uh, you know we're not beyond a, a bit of a 80s uh, funk and disco every now and then and uh, or uh, obviously contemporary music but yeah so um since i've moved to panama what was, what was it uh, four years ago i've been digging a lot of local 45s as well a lot of uh, 45s from the region lps too of course um so today uh, i think it's all about the caribbean and yep. uh, uh so sean let's uh, let's hear it uh, from you in a, in a bit and uh, we're going to try to take everyone on a journey uh, from Calypso and then onwards to uh, other genres that are a bit lesser known, like non-reggae and uh, or, or not salsa from Puerto Rico, but just different styles that we can find from smaller islands or uh, that are a bit less uh, popular in the West, I would say, you know, and uh, take it from there. I mean, it's gonna. Be, it's, it's one of the best things I've enjoyed when I listen to your sets and when you've done sets for Coffee and Donuts and 45 Day, uh, and we've done two Panama live streams where you collated and curated a load of great uh, Panamanian DJs and yeah, 45 sessions. So uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you're going to play. Sean, tell us a little bit about you. Uh, my name is Sean Romalo, aka Sean the Vinyl Villain. I am a vinyl collector from Toronto, Canada. Uh, I, I guess I kind of met you through... Um, just through all the streaming that you were doing during the pandemic, Chris Saz, yeah. along I've just met uh, today in streaming person, I guess you could say. Um, <laughs> so I'm excited to do this. In yeah. streaming per, in, in streaming, yeah. It's not in ISP. person. But it's... Yeah, <laughs> rather than IRL, <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, during the pandemic, I uh, many of the followers that are on here uh, might have seen a, a series that I started called Digging in the Crates where I pulled a different record out of my collection or I invite other DJs and uh, music record collectors to pull records out of their collection and talk a bit about it and why it's their favorite record and so forth. Um, other than that, uh, I am I DJ at some of the bars out here in Toronto with uh, one of my partners, uh, DJ uh, Blush, from also from Toronto. Yeah, yeah. We do disco, we do 60s uh, rock and funk and soul, all the good stuff. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I'm just a big music fan, just like you guys are. So I'm excited to hear what you guys picked for, for this uh, show. 
Yeah, I mean, your show digging the crates was great. Um, I can't remember who it was specifically who sort of linked us up initially, but you just reached out and <clears throat> said about me and ZZ coming on. And it was so cool doing like a little mini interview and picking out a song that we each liked. Um, and then you had on that show the uh, Duck Hunt picture disc. Yep. Uh, 45, which I then went and had to get as well. Uh, it's a Super Mario, isn't it? I think on one side and then... Duck yeah, Hunt Super Mario Brothers, one on yeah. the on the A side and uh, Duck Hunt on the flip side. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say hello to Juice Boxdo, DJ Babs, hey, Babs from Toronto, uh, who's also been on the show a couple of times. Um, so, yeah, it's great. Right. We've got, I think, quite a lot of music to go through. I know, Malong, you said you've got about seven. We're probably not getting through all of them, but about 75, 45. Um, but let's let's get rolling with a little bit of music. I think if we do it, maybe just say why you've picked out a, the particular song you've picked out or the artist, um, and then we'll have a listen, and then we can chat afterwards. So, Malong, if you want to go first. Sure. Okay. Um, so let me ask you, what would you like to hear first? Like, so <clears throat> basically... Knowing that give, us an gonna... option. give us some options and we'll choose. Yeah, exactly. Let's let's hear it. Um, so <clears throat> I've been selecting a bunch of things. So there is, of course, we spoke about Calypso while yep. we were preparing for the show on on, uh, on the WhatsApp uh, chat. So I went with a bunch of uh, Panamanian Calypso tunes. A lot of them, actually, a bit, a bit too many. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I selected a few things from Curaçao, where I recently had the opportunity to go digging. And that was a lot of fun, and the music is phenomenal. It's completely uh, off the map, uh, yet it's uh, tremendous music. I got a few things from Suriname here. Uh, one tune from Guyana, since I promised uh, Sean, which was actually well, was pressed in Guyana, but it's a Jamaican artist. A uh, few things from Trinidad as well, from the roots, you know, a lot of calypso, some jazz as well, a bit of chutney music. Um, See, and a few I, things maybe from start Columbia. there. Maybe start there because yeah. I saw you put the phrase chutney in uh -huh. uh, the chat. Why would chutney? <laughs> and obviously, my understanding of chutney is like sort of uh, mango chutney or onion chutney or something that you add to food. So I've <laughs> never heard of it as a musical term. So, okay. what is chutney? And let's have a listen. Okay, okay, super interesting. So we start uh, we start there. It's one of the latest styles, I would say, and and then roll backwards to the back to the fifties with original calypso. So chutney, um, you know. There's a, a, a huge um, community in the Caribbean from the, from the Indian subcontinent um, that were brought by uh, the Brits as coolies uh, when, when uh, slavery was abolished uh, to work on the plantations, to do all the menial jobs, etc. And, uh, and they, they built a whole Caribbean, Caribbean Indian culture, which is fascinating. Um, okay, and that, that makes sense. Now. Yeah. Caribbean, Indian, yeah, okay. Exactly. And so, you know, you have, a, I mean, there, there's a, a whole lot of them in Jamaica. There's a lot of them in Trinidad, in Suriname, in Guyana. Uh, I think in Guyana and Suriname, they're, they're almost like half of the population, right? Wow. Um, they have quite a, a presence in Jamaica where they're a bit less active on the music scene than, the, than say, the Chinese Jamaicans, etc. But in Trinidad, interestingly, there was, there's a huge uh, fusion. So there, there's always been this sort of, um, music production in Trinidad, in Suriname, in Guyana that was uh, sung in Hindustani. So like Caribbean Hindustani would be a sort of dialect uh, based off, uh, on several uh, different uh, dialects from the Indian subcontinent. And um, they were doing their, their very, very traditional music and uh, doing bawal and all these like uh, super religious beats. And eventually some, uh, some people, uh, I think it, it started in Trinidad with this guy called Sundar Popo who um who just decided you know let's let's mix this with the local styles and and go calypso or soca even with uh and give it a sort of a, a twist from our own uh, identity of, uh, of indian caribbean right so i'm gonna play a tune by this guy sundar popo fantastic it's a bit deep but it's magnificent you will see it's it, the indian influence is very very uh evident yeah uh, but then check it check his uh, his lyrics it's amazing okay I think someone's at your door. <laughs> Thank you. 
again, my darling, when we go meet up again. Tell me the number of your plan, my darling, when we go meet up again. My darling, when we go meet up again. A scorpion sing me, I feel in a good day. Darling, if you love me, come lie down in my bed. Tell me the number of your plan, my darling, when we go meet up again. My darling, when we go meet up again. Really interesting. You living in a plane, girl, you leaving me alone. I wish I got someone, girl, to call me come on. So you can totally recognize the patois, right? It's, it's yeah. very close to Jamaican patois. You living in a plane, girl, you leaving me alone. I wish I got someone, girl, to call me go on. I love you very much, girl. I love you with my heart. And it is very sad now for us. But you may know what I'm going to say, though. Go ahead. Yeah. You have to stick that on 33. Oh, right. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, no, so that was uh, Sundar Popo. The, the song is called uh, Scorpion Gyal. Yeah. Gyal, uh, important in, in Patois fashion. And uh, yeah, it's one of the early two. I mean, Sundar Popo has often been credi uh, credited as the creator of, uh, of Chutney. And um, yeah, I found this one super interesting. It's such a cool yes. name, though. <laughs> it's such a cool yeah. name. And, and I, I love yeah, yeah. the sort of the English that sort of makes you really concentrate on what he's saying. Yeah. Um, and it's just the, again, the rhythm of the lyrics going into this like really interesting Indian sort of funk. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. What year did that record come out? I was going to ask that as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's guess. Hold on. Let's sure. guess. What do you reckon? Yeah, Sean? It, it, it... Uh, it's hard to say because Chutney is a kind of like, there was a while where it just sounded, the same for like so many decades and it's a very specific genre yeah like i don't know i, I i'm guessing that could very well have been from the 60s it's 64 yeah. maybe you know yeah. i'm not even sure it's not on it but uh, <laughs> based on it, uh, it could have been the 1940s too but it would have been on a different format <laughs> oh, back then right it's definitely yeah, yeah. Late 60s, yeah i guess early because, 70s. Of the format, yeah. because of the format it's going to be 60s probably isn't it maybe 50s so, yeah push. could i see the label on that yeah, of course. Let us solo the sounds. Oh yeah, Windsor, that's Windsor yeah. Record. That could have been. <laughs> well, they're the printing for many but... year, really. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. So we know, but based on uh, Sundar Popo's career and uh, when he started introducing that whole like, okay, let me mix my uh, Hindustani roots with uh, with soca, I would say late sixties, early seventies. I would assume so. Yeah, and then Shotney became a big uh, another thing and it, it completely integrated soca and, and became a little bit more bumpy and commercial and sort of uh, i have a couple of uh, records for later but um the likes of uh, uh what's uh, what's uh, blah blah and kanchan and uh, all these other amazing artists from trinidad who were, who were pushing it to a more disco uh, yes uh, soca like but party soca style yeah yeah it's different it, it is like you're right it's a very different um version of soca it's like all the music that came out of the caribbeans like it kind of just exploded and went in different directions right there was soca chutney is very specific to the indian culture that migrated to um to the west indies so yeah and then you have reggae obviously you know dance hall that came out of that yeah, and, yeah. i mean is it um, the other thing i was going to say is are there any artists nowadays uh sampling this sort of chutney music have you heard anyone like sort of put this sort of stuff over say like a hip-hop beat or sort of like modernize it in any way i i have not i'm not aware of it at all no i'm i know that there are some uh there's still a, a, a chutney soca scene to this day 
Okay. There's the, if you, you just check it on YouTube and a, a bunch of artists will pop out and, and it's more like, it's very soca, like modern soca, you know, like really, yeah. really uh, party time in, in the Caribbean, everybody in, uh, in, the, in, in fancy clothes and everything. But um, do, perhaps they would sample all their artists as a tribute or something like that. I've never really heard anything. Uh, but in, yeah. the, in the hip hop scene, absolutely, I've never heard anything. You could see no. because there's definitely some sampling material there. Easy. Ah, totally, totally. Easy. Cool. Sean, that was a great start, Malong. Uh, Sean, no. your turn. Yeah, so I um, I forgot to mention this, too, when, when I was talking. My my parents are both from the country of Guyana. Um, okay. And, you know, we had a lot of, of soca music playing in the house, especially around um, Carnival time, Carabana, as we call it here in Toronto. Uh, which just passed uh, a couple weekends ago where, you know, we have such a big West Indian um, group that live in Toronto in the city and we celebrate uh, Carnival with all the different cultures, Jamaican, Bajan, um, Guyanese, Trinidadian, right? Um, but so what I decided to do with this was to try to like timeline the history of, of Calypso music in Soka. Cool. Um, so the first record that I was going to play is kind of as far back from its origins, like in the 1930s, I would say, when they actually started pressing a lot of the stuff on vinyl. Um, it's from this compilation. I don't have any 45s, by the way. I'm just going to put it out it's, there. It's okay. It's okay. It's we're very not, hard to we're, find we're sort of not 45. precious here, you know. But it's, so this uh... one is called Where Was Butler? Um, I actually bought this from uh, uh, Japan over Discogs. So it's it's a pretty cool thing. It has like... All these artists that you see at the bottom, Attila the Hun, King Radio, the Tiger, the Growler. These guys were all some of the first uh, recording artists to come out of Trinidad and Tobago, which is where Calypso emerged from uh, in the late 19th century until, like I said, when it started uh, to become recorded on, on, um, on vinyl. Um, and just really quickly, like a lot of the Calypso is originally rooted from African rhythms and melodies blended with elements of French, Spanish and British co colonial influence. Um, early Calypso songs were often used as a form of social commentary and satire addressing political, social and cultural issues. And I would say the satire was probably more of the, like the sexualized stuff that you kind of hear, even in, in Malong's like Chutney song. Yeah. Everything was very uh, sexualized in a lot of the, the songs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, some of the songs were just very politically driven. And so, um, and then uh, after the, the emancipation, uh, Calypso gained popularity among the Afro Trinidadian population, started to evolve as a distinct musical genre. Um, Calypso became closely associated with Trinidad's carnival celebrations, like I mentioned. Um, and then, as I said, in the early 20th century, the introduction of phonograph recordings helped spread Calypso beyond Trinidad, making it more accessible to wider audiences. Um, so this first song that I've got on here that I was going to play is called Money is King by okay. the artist The Tiger. And it says it's from 1935. So wow. we're going to go way back here. Way back in time. All right. Let me just mute the mic. If a man has money today, people do not care if he has cocoa bear. If a man has money today, people do not care if he has cocoa bear. He can commit murder and get off free and live in the governor's company. But if you are poor, people will tell you sure and a dog is better than you. If you have money to buy in a store, the boss will shake your hands at the door. Call ten clerks to take down everything with kick lot earring and diamond ring. He may send them to your house on a motorbike. You can pay the bills whenever you like. Not a soul will ask you a thing. They know very well that money is king. A 
man with the call and tie and west coat Ask the Chinese man to trust him, Accra and float Me not trust him, ball out the Chinese man And you better move him from me frying pan You college man, me not know ABC You want a McGraggy and Penny You want to start to jump in the man's belly And he cried out, a dog is better than me A dog can walk about and take a bone Call head, tail, bread, fish, tail and bone If it's a good breed and not too wild Some people will take it and mine as a child But when a hungry man goes out to beg They will set a bulldog behind his leg For the policeman may chalk him down too You see where a dog is better than you If you have money and things going nice, any woman would call you honey and spice if you can give her a dress. When you pair of shoes, she'll say she have no uses for you. When you try to caress her, she will tell you stop her. I can't carry love in the Chinese shop. I'm sure most of you will agree that it's true. If you have money, dog is better than you. I want wow. to point out, like, some of the stuff might be offensive to some people. If you're really listening closely to the lyrics, uh, like I said, this stuff was recorded in the 1930s. So yeah, yeah, a lot of it's not politically correct anymore. Um, no, and um, but that yeah. that's just it, it's just how their lives were back then. Wasn't yeah, it? you got to no. imagine too. Like so, a lot of this, like my my family is very mixed up too because um, in Guyana, a lot of a lot of the cultures it was one big melting pot there in Guyana, right? So yeah. Both of my parents are of Portuguese descendant, um, but I have cousins who are Indian descendant, black descendant, Chinese descendant. So to, to uh, like it, it really was just a lot of different cultures meeting each other for the first time. Right. And and things were different back then. So um, but it, it's kind of interesting to see how far things have come since then. Right. Exactly. And even like the sound of, of that, like that's really early Calypso. So to hear um, it in its earliest form is, is it, it almost sounds like it could score like the Little Rascals if they took place in, in the Caribbeans. Yeah, I mean, I guess the thing is, obviously, that's like one of the earliest sort of recorded. Yep. They must have been performing this from before that. Yeah. Before they got to stage. So, you know, it's a shame we obviously can't go right back to the beginning because those recordings just don't exist. Yes. Um, but it's interesting that this obviously was of a quality that, they felt we need to press this um yeah. and obviously it still exists now the fact that you know almost 100 years later we're listening to it is just yeah it's amazing it's the power of music it's the power of music yeah and like really quickly too like a lot of the um like even on this compilation they talk about a lot of the songs being politically driven in some cases they were like union driven um so it's it is kind of interesting when you listen to some more of the songs on this comp because they're they're talking about, you know, um, uh, you know, different like workplace environments, stuff like that. So, so I'd say on the top um, of the thing, it says a documentary. So is, is this from a documentary? I don't know. To be honest with you, I was, I was trying to look into that too. Um, is it the Calypso documentary. From... You might be, I don't know if you can see that there, but you might be able yeah. to find it if you look into it. Um, yeah. Calypso but... documentary from Trinidad. Where was Butler? Yeah, uh, I, I assume it exists. Try looking up and, in yeah, some it, might, it might be out there. Yeah, cool. All right, we're going to go back to Malong. Um, I'm going to skip this round because I haven't got as many records as you guys. Um, but we'll do another one each from you guys. Um, and I think because I'd quite like to get through as much music as can, um, let's try and maybe do a minute and a half to two minutes of each song. Um, because obviously people then can then go in and discover the songs themselves. Um, and obviously I want to get as much music represented. So uh, number two, Malong, do we get a choice again? If, if you like, of course. Uh, what about... something that was very old school, but... Uh, oh, no, no, yeah. put that on, put that on. Put that on. I'll, okay. I'll choose for, for the next one, maybe, maybe play something that you got most recently on your recent trip. Maybe that can be one of your third ones. Sure, yeah, yeah cool. So yeah, tell us about absolutely. this one. So um, this is a song from a gentleman uh, who used to be called Lord Panama. His real name is actually uh, George Allen. 
is a is a sort of a, a, a legend uh, in the Panamanian calypso scene. Yeah, uh, this is from way back, late '40s, early '50s. Uh, some of the recordings were saved from then and uh, and uh, pressed on vinyl only later in the '60s or '70s. There's a few 45s floating around. I think there's a compilation or two uh, as well uh, attributed to him. And um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you, you'll you see like the, the Panamanian Calypso culture is uh, heavily influenced, obviously, by Trinidad. Uh, you, you know, to give you a bit of context, um, when, uh, when the canal was being constructed in Panama and then later on in terms of like labor on the canal itself, a lot of people were brought in or invited in from, from the nearby islands. So there was a lot of Jamaican workers, a lot of Trinidadian workers, uh, a bunch of people also came from Haiti. Um, so they some and and then you know there was also a, a, an existing Afro descendant population here in Panama. So all this sort of blended up into creating this explosion, musical explosion, with many different influences in it. And what's perhaps distinctive of of um, Panamanian calypso is that many of the uh, of the musicians, not the singers themselves, but the musicians who were invited in the sessions to record where also uh, guys who were, were making a buck in hotels, etc., playing jazz and, you know, Latin jazz, uh, rumba, and uh, early, the early styles that were, you know, sort of popular at the time or that were entertaining for the U.S. Uh, troops that were stationed around, etc., etc. So it has a, a, a very mild but distinctive Latin touch to it, uh, which makes it very interesting. But as you will hear, it's also extremely close to, uh, to uh, the original uh, Trinidadian Calypso. So this is uh, Meldas con Colon, by Lord Panama. Full-on Cuban descarga style, you know? So yeah, typical. And then that in, in great uh, Lord Panama fashion, what it in, in many of his tunes was uh, starting in, in in English in uh, in typical patois, and then move on to Spanish for the second chorus, just to uh, to sort of uh, talk to both audiences in Panama, right? So it's yeah, pretty unique. And that's so cool. And again, it's it's that whole what we talk about collaboration and working together and the fact that, you know, he has realized that to to reach and to get his message across to the most people, he has to do both both languages. And it's amazing. Yeah. 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 And I think he was just having fun. Just also it was showcasing the fact that he could speak a uh, decent Spanish and yeah. uh because not not everyone does necessarily. So he comes from a part of uh, of Panama that's called the, the Colon province, which is okay. on the other side of the of the canal, right? I'm I'm based in Panama City. We are on the on the Pacific side, but the Colon is the other end of the canal on the on the Caribbean side, and there's a, a, a huge population there whose whose first language is not necessarily Spanish but Patois. Okay, okay, right. that's really interesting, really interesting. Well, like we've discussed, I'm hoping to get there maybe next year. 
Um, so I will, I will learn a lot more about Panama. Uh, hopefully we can visit. Um, Sean, your turn. What have you gone for? Uh, okay. So the, the next one I have, so I was going to mention too, um, like the first record that I played was during like the 1930s where, um, you know, there was a lot of social commentary in the earlier days of, of, uh, Calypso, uh, recordings where, it was like a platform for social and political commentary addressing issues such as colonialism, labor struggles, and cultural identity. Yeah. But um, after World War II, uh, it started to become a little bit more like it was more uh, meant for, for dancing and, and having good times, right? And someone who, who popularized that in America was this guy, Harry Belafonte, um, yeah. I'm not going to play his music as most people know it already. And he's, you know, I think he's someone that we should brilliant really musician. Know. Amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. The, Calypso has a lot to, uh, to thank for him uh, for what he's done. Uh, this artist that I have is called, uh, Wilmoth mouth Houdini. Um, he was a pioneering Trinidadian Calypsonian known for socially conscious lyrics and humor infused performances. And the song that I chose here is called Bobby socks idol. Uh, it's a song that connects to the famous American singer Frank Sinatra. The song talks about a style of short socks called bobby socks uh, that right. were popular after World War II. <laughs> this style was a big thing for young women in the United States. Uh, yeah. And Houdini's song is about a girl who really likes a famous singer, like how many girls liked Frank Sinatra. So it's, it's kind of along the lines. But it's, it's a funny song, and it's, it's actually, I think it's been sampled by Avalanche's uh, more recently, oh, wow. okay. yeah. So you might you might know this one. Okay, so I'll play it, and if it runs longer than I don't think it'll be longer than uh, two minutes or so, but I'll try to cut it short. If anything, okay. <laughs> Sinatra. Ah, yeah. Frank Sinatra. Frankie, me boy, you don't know. You have a perfect voice to sing Calypso. What did they say? Ah, oh, Frankie Sinatra. Ah, oh, Frank Sinatra. Frankie, my boy, don't know. You have a perfect voice to sing Calypso. Why not make it this with the Houdini? Singing the West Indian melody. Frankie, me boy, I'm showing sell two million copies or more. Oh, Frankie Sinatra. Oh, Frank Sinatra. Frankie, my boy, don't know. You have a perfect voice to sing Calypso. It can be Dick Ames or Bing Crosby. Bet me money on little Frankie. I know he have the ability to sing Calypso symphoniously. Oh, Frankie Sinatra, oh, Frank Sinatra, Frankie, my boy, don't know, you have a perfect voice to sing Calypso. You will be on the Caribbean moon, Frankie will sing Houdini will croon, then the Bobby Shocks would know, I have made you the high priest of Calypso. Oh, Frankie Sinatra, oh, Frank Sinatra, Frankie, my boy, don't Indian would be bound to say when they hear the serenade break of day. Frank Sinatra is getting off. Wilma Houdini is a law. Oh, Frankie Sinatra. Oh, Frank Sinatra. Frankie, my boy, don't know. You have a perfect voice to sing Calypso. Do re mi fa sol la ti do. Music is a thing, Frankie, that you know. With your ability, only leave the accent to Houdini. What I said? Oh, Frankie Sinatra. Oh, Frank Sinatra. Frankie, my boy, don't know. You have a perfect voice to sing Calypso. Today in America, they talk about the Andrew sister. When they sing rum and Coca-Cola, but we bring them something now better. What I said? Oh, Frankie Sinatra. Oh, Frank Sinatra. Frankie, my boy, don't know. You have a perfect voice to sing Calypso. 
Yeah, he mentions uh, the Andrews sisters rum and Coca-Cola, too. Like, that was another really popular American style uh, of Calypso music in post-war, too, right? So yeah it's so cool I and mean, again i love how old all of this music is and like you say sampled by uh the avalanches and as soon as soon as i as soon as it started and i heard the lyric i was like yeah i recognize that um <laughs> uh, great. i'm just gonna say good evening to uh dj fade hello uh hope you're well mate um cool okay i haven't done as much history uh and i'm not as knowledgeable or uh have so much <laughs> of this sort of stuff but i've got a few bits uh, that i'm going to play you um but before that we've got dj babs is saying the female voice on this is so interesting and just a juxtaposition to his voice yeah exactly um yeah uh, this is just one i like i like sort of covers um and um i don't think this is an original but i, I may be wrong you may tell me that it is an original um but this is uh, mighty sparrow and it is under my skin uh and it's one that i i play a fair bit when i get a chance um but uh yeah here is this one let me just set this up so i've got the audio fine so go ahead let me know if this sounds all right <laughs> you under my skin I've got you deep in the heart of me so deep in my heart you are really a part of me I've got you under my skin I try so not to give in I even said to myself you know this affair never will go so well but why should I try to resist when, darling, I know so well I've got you under my skin I'm gonna sacrifice anything, come what might For the sake of just having you near in spite of a warning voice It comes in the night, repeats in my head Don't you know, little fool, you ain't never gonna win Use your mentality, wake up to reality Every time that I do just the thought of you makes me stop before I begin Cause I've got you under my skin I'm gonna sacrifice anything come what might For the sake of having you near In spite of a warning voice that comes in the night Repeating in my ear Don't you know, little fool, you can't win Use your mentality, wake up mm -hmm, to reality Every time that I do just the thought of you Makes me stop before I begin Cause I've got you under my skin I've got you under my skin I've got you under my skin So there nice. you go. I love that one. It's funny because I actually have a, a Mighty Sparrow record picked out too. So oh, cool, cool. He, he's got um, so many too. great songs. <laughs> what what year did that one come out? Uh, it looks like it was seventy, no, sixty five. Yeah, I was gonna say. And this yeah. is a, this is a repress. I think this is a twenty sixteen repress, but this is sixty five. Um, and it's Mighty Sparrow's got "You Don't Love Me" on the on the flip of this one. Um, I'm just going to say hello to a couple of people. We've got uh, DJ Sam Smite. Welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, we've got Sherelle LaFunk. Welcome in. Uh, we've got Malong in Panama. We've got Sean the Vinyl Villain in Canada, Toronto. And we are talking Calypso. We're talking Caribbean music. Uh, really cool stuff so far. And we've only done a couple of rounds. So back to Malong. What you got? Right. Oh, I think um, I asked you, yeah, didn't I? I said, I said, yeah. play something from your latest. Uh, yeah, purchase. yeah. So your latest trip. Exactly. No, I was gonna rebound on the on the previous tune uh, that Sean was playing to to uh, rock up some uh, some fifties uh, uh, jazz from Trinidad by Cyril Diaz, or or perhaps I have this thing. Look, I, I might play it later, but I found this beautiful LP by uh, 
King Arison from the Bahamas. Oh, hold that, that I, up again. I found that. Oh, yeah, sorry, of course. There we go. The Drums of Nassau by King oh. Arison. And wow. uh, yeah, because so Sean was mentioning the, 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 the gringo aspect of things and how sometimes like popularity of Caribbean music in the US would sort of make would be a definite uh, trendsetter on the on, on the industry uh, in the islands and um yeah there's a, a tune in there i might just play it later it's called a uh, uh, rum punch rumba so like a whole mix of like you know, you know caribbean tropes rum punch some rumba very like uh, cuban etc etc but it's an absolutely beautiful song so i'll play yeah. that later and then uh, let's move back to um to uh kura sound and you that's what you wanted to hear Christos, yeah. right? You wanted to check what was the, the sound about. So Curaçao, it's it's a very it's a very special place. Um, it's in the middle of of everything, right? You have it's it's just off the coast of Venezuela, right? So there's a, a, a massive Latin influence, but at the same time, it's definitely an, an Afro descendant uh, island, where uh, ninety five percent of the population, I think, are descendant of slaves uh, that were brought by the Dutch. Um, so there's a, a strong Afro culture. There's a, a lot of love for Latin stuff through their connection with Venezuela and, uh, and other islands. There's a bit of, obviously, the, of influence from Calypso as well. So their music, they have distinctive genres as well. Like there's one that they call tumbe, which is uh, it, it's very close to merengue, but with uh, where they play with different type of drums. and um, uh, But they also play a lot of salsa. I think I'm going to just play the one tune I, I, I spotted that I really like. There you go. Um, so this one is kind of... In between all of this, right? We have you have the whole okay. Caribbean in there. It's uh, it's sung in the in Papiamento, which is their uh, their local uh, language, which blends English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Dutch. Fascinating, really. Yeah. Um, and then uh, yeah, so I found you know a bunch of things by this artist called uh, Macario Prudencia, <coughs> who's um, who had a band called the uh, is uh, Agrupación Salsa Antillana. So there's definitely a, a Latin a Latin touch to it, but uh, you will hear the mix is very interesting. So there's elements of uh, of the tumbe sound that uh, from the island uh, and uh, blend with uh, blended with salsa proper like Venezuelan style, and uh, and, uh, and a couple of riffs that uh, you will recognize as well from Calypso. It's a very interesting mix. Let's hear it. <laughs> Colman by Pamia, you better know. Then I put this Colman by Pamia, you better know. Mapum through Mutum Vetcher, Edima Kali, Tanabe Flat. Mapum through Mutum Vetcher, Edima Kali, Tanabe Flat. Awa Kusuku Tawarapa, Funchi Kubonchi Takumina, then make a lemon and Belanza. Jumbala, then Mobeshi, Jumbala, then Mobeshi, Jumbala, then Mosi, Jumbala, then Mobeshi, Jumbala, then Mosa, then Mogabesh. Jata gago gago, jumbala de mo beshi. Eti kaka kaka kashi pepe, jumbala de mo beshi. Oh, emu jata demasiado gago, jumbala de mo beshi. Eti kaka kaka kashi pepe, jumbala de mo beshi. Aya wa kusuku tawaraba, jumbala de mo beshi. Si punchi kubonchi takuminda, jumbala de mo beshi. Ai lembe ke lembe lembe lanza, jumbala de mo beshi. Ai zembla katara denta tutu, jumbala de mo beshi. Ay es mucha con su huevo spier, y un bala de mover. Es mi manga y van y la comí, y un bala de mover. Ay es mucha con su cara esto, y un bala de mover. Es mi manga y van y la comí, y un bala de mover. Mi tío y yo, mi tabu la cubo, y un bala de mover. Ay es mucha con su cara esto, y un bala de mover. Es mi manga y van y 
can't drop on me. Yumbala, the mobile, you meet the can't drop on me. Yumbala, the mobile, oh, Yumbala, the mobile, she. Yumbala, the mobile, get you, Mala, 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 get you, I immediately fell in love with the music on the island. Incredible. Was, yeah. Did you say that when it was Portuguese? No, 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 no. So the, the dialect, the papiamento, is a mix oh. of Portuguese, Dutch, Spanish, and English. But there's okay, definitely... Yeah, yeah, very, very, very... I, hear I have no idea what they're saying, but like, I can kind of hear a bit you, of the You Portuguese. could hear the Portuguese. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Because, you know what? What The first time I heard papiamento, to me, it sounded a little bit like a... Like the Portuguese Creole, they speak in in Cabo Verde, yeah. And uh, and and my wife, who is uh, who is uh, Portuguese, immediately understood everything on the radio when we landed there. It was really amazing. So yeah, now there's the strong Portuguese roots, wow, and wow. Uh, and elements uh, that uh, that Portuguese speakers will understand. There's of course a lot of influence from Brazil. Huh? I forgot to yeah. mention that, but uh, on the in the on the music front, but yeah, that's uh, that's the style. I'll play a few more later. I yeah, yeah, really, cool. really, really good. I really enjoyed it. And as DJ Fade said, he, he loved the energy of, of that one. It just oh, it's yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. constant and chugging, and the, uh, the sort of call and return sort of uh, music as well. Brilliant. Yeah. Sean, what have we got next? Um, well, Malong actually mentioned it too, and this was one of the ones I had planned. This is uh, uh, a track from Cyril Diaz and his orchestra. Uh, the song is called Voodoo. So Cyril Diaz and his orchestra is a Trinidadian musical group led by Cyril Diaz. He played a pivotal role in the development of Calypso and Caribbean music during the mid-20th century. Formed in the 1940s, the orchestra skillfully blended Caribbean rhythms, jazz, and Calypso, infusing traditional sounds with modern influences. And um, actually, one... Um, connection to toronto that cyril diaz actually had was in the i believe in the 70s or 60s he migrated to canada and lived uh, his last uh, days living days right here in toronto in the city um and what i also found interesting he's a he's um their band uh malang might know like they're more known for like their steel drum uh sound and he actually taught steel drum lessons uh, towards the end of his life here in the city too, oh, which that's I find incredible. Pretty, no, I never heard this. Yeah, that's Cyril Diaz. Yeah. yeah, so, so he was this, playing in Toronto as well. Yeah, there's a lot of connection. Even Sparrow, M Mighty Sparrow, performed in Toronto a lot. And uh, this record that I was actually going to play after, I think I oh, believe yeah. it was recorded here in Toronto because on that's the back he one. talks about how much the people of Toronto loved uh, his performances. So yeah. Anyways, um, enough about Toronto. I'll, I'm just going to throw on, like I said, this song is called Voodoo, and it's by Cyril Diaz and his orchestra.
This is really beautiful. Yeah, beautiful stuff. Really beautiful. Yeah, I don't. That's a a, a beautiful, beautiful record. <clears throat> and again, it just takes you somewhere, doesn't it? You hear it, and it takes you to that place, and it's you sort of get lost yeah. in the sound. Ah, oh, yes. Like the song is just called. It's called Voodoo, and it just has yeah. that sort of like. <laughs> there you go. Like you're in the uh, jungle. Put you in a trance. Uh, yeah. Who's that villain from James Bond? The Doctor yeah. Samity. Da, yeah, Doctor. S yeah, Samity. That was, um, was Baron Samity. Sorry, Baron Samity. That's, yeah, that's, that's who from, I'm picturing. Uh, yeah, when I hear that song. Oh, yeah. that's, which is that film? That is, that's my favorite one, but I can't. Live remember. and Let Die. Live and Let Die. Yeah, and obviously yeah. you've got uh, you got Wings doing the theme yeah, tune, exactly. and then there's a there's a cover. I don't know if I can find it quickly, but it's it's there's a cover there. Ah, oh wow! That's I wanted to show that to Sean. Have you have you heard of this uh, called uh, Orchestral Overture, which is actually uh, Cyril Diaz. The, no. the song is called Meeting Is Mine. It was repressed by a French label called Jamwax. Okay. Recently, very, very nice, uh, very small independent label. Um, no, that's not the same label. And then for, for the little story, um, he repressed a whole uh, LP by, uh, by Cyril Diaz uh, called uh, Jazz from uh, the Dirty Jazz from, from the South, something like this. Um, beautiful. And there's a tune in there called uh, Taboo, which yep. is... Uh, Inspired by the famous uh, uh, Cuban song, you have it there. Yeah, it's oh, on here wow. too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a great so song. So that too, song, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. and it's yeah. inspired the gay lads from Jamaica to yeah. write a song called "Africa We Wanna Go." Yeah. That you might have heard, and it was popularized by uh, by uh, Dennis Brown later. So that oh. the whole roots of of that uh, Jamaican uh, reggae classic came from this interpretation of taboo by, really? by Siri Diaz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty I didn't uh, know that as well. the connection. And then behind it, taboo itself, this is a version of uh, that Cyril Diaz and his orchestra did that was pretty unique to their to their own uh, style. But it was uh, uh, again inspired from a, a tune called Taboo that was written by a lady called Margarita Lecuona from Cuba in the 1920s or 30s, I think she was she herself had just seen a movie by uh What's his name? Murnau, you know that German director, was very experimental. The guy who did Nosferatu as well, right? He had a, just okay. come up with a movie called Taboo. So she wrote a whole thing, where uh, which came it became an instrumental classic afterwards. But the, the original version had lyrics on it, which were sort of tribute to the the the, the witchcraft, uh, the Orisha type witch, witchcraft that was uh, quite popular, which is still popular in Cuba, but was very taboo among the the sort of white elite in cuba it was a sort of an african thing you know and so she wrote this song her, herself being from a very posh uh, fancy family and then it got popular and i think it's been covered more than 500 times in like there's like jazz versions mambo versions uh rock versions there's surf rock versions as well uh it, it even inspired uh you know that tune that's in Pop Fiction? What is it called? That surf jazz uh, by the Apache or something like this? Yep. I mean, yeah. it's all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, so the yeah. connection is gigantic and all of that is like in between Cuba, Cyril Diaz, Jamaica and, and surf rock. I found it quite amazing. 
That's crazy. I, I didn't realize that there was that much. Like, there's a little bit of a write up on the back of this record about each song, but I didn't know that. That's that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to play the next one, and before we do that, we're going to say Kaiser in Sissy. Welcome, welcome in. Um, I like cover versions, but I think for me, the first time sort of like steel pan music and that got to the, is when we went to we went to Trinidad and Tobago my, myself and my wife uh about a year before we got married and I think it's on that trip that we decided yeah we've been together a while we're gonna we're gonna get married uh and we went and we spent most of the time in Tobago seeing the amazing rainforest and the beaches and the people um and there used to be a thing called Sunday school where you'd go to like an area and they'd have like fish and they'd have like uh, stalls and things and they'd have like steel pan band playing music and i think i think hearing it live is when it really got me interested so this is a cover and this is by um amral's trinidad cavaliers and i think it is from 1976 um and uh yeah it's, it's a cover as i said uh, but it's a great cover and the original is brilliant as well Help if I put some volume on. Take two. Keys sound really familiar on this. Yeah, I mean it's it's oh, a, a complicit. Um, it's ninety percent of me is you, um, and it's uh, the cover's like a it's like a funk record, isn't it? I think the original. Um, but yeah, I just love the sound of that, and that's from nineteen seventy six. Yeah. And again, there's uh, more so now. There's a lot of steel pan. There's a uh, cow rhythm and steel, which I listen to a lot. I was just gonna say I, that's who I thought yeah. you were gonna pick. No, well, I, I thought that's maybe a bit too modern, but I mean, yeah. I mean, no, you is... got to put them on too, man. They're uh, yeah, and I've got just... I've got like their brand new one actually. We'll put put it in a, in a while. They're literally their brand new one. Um, but yeah, I, I love the steel pants, and I, as I said, I think it's from that trip. That was two thousand and seven. We got married in two thousand eight. So when I heard, first heard steel pan live in in Tobago, uh, that's I think why my love is is so much. Uh, right, Malong. Uh, before we go, DJ Blush is in the house um and i know you dj with her uh sean and she's been a guest she's been uh on the 45 queens we did a canada thing we had dj blush dj nico dj babs and uh very early in the morning and they were having mimosas and uh, <laughs> uh portuguese custard tarts i think uh nice it was, re it was really early in the morning um but yeah that was a great show right Melong, you are up next what are you gonna play us well, what, why don't I play the, that uh, King Harrison LP that I was just showing you and bragging about? Let's let's hear it straight. Um, yeah, so this is uh, King Harrison is a, a drummer 
from Nassau in the Bahamas. And uh, I, I just happened on, on this record uh, com by complete chance. Uh, uh, what was this? In, in St. Petersburg, Florida. <laughs> Under, uh, in a place that has about, I think they, they advertise that they store about 3 million vinyls. It's just a wow. one gigantic warehouse that's also a store. And, yep. um, and they have like a whole part where like, you know, everything is nice and labeled and organized by alphabetically, etc. And uh, and another section in the basement where you just go and you figure it out, you know, it's, it's just piles and piles and piles of record. And you can tell when they arrive by entry, etc. And this, I, I just came across this box with a, a whole batch that uh, must have come from, uh, from somebody who was fond of West Indian music and Caribbean stuff. There was a whole lot of really good records from Haiti. And this one, which I'd never heard of, uh, but so King Harrison, uh, he, he also featured in a James Bond movie, actually. I think they, they mentioned this on the, in Thunderball. Yeah, there you go. It's really even written on the, how on the that, cover. Uh, how the cover up? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I don't wait. Let me remove the plastic sleeve so that <clears throat> it's a bit more visible. There you go. So Drums of Nassau by King Harrison. Uh, again, the James Bond connection. Uh, yeah, it's a nice yeah. cover. And yeah. then uh, that tune, like I was telling you, is, is called Rum Punch Roomba. So it's very, very full of Caribbean tropes, but the tune itself is pretty amazing. Let's hear it. Oh, oh, take two. Sorry. Hold on, hold on. Did you copy me now? Love that muffled trumpet. Pretty impressive. And you know, funny thing. So just as I was listening to this with you guys, um, I realized that uh, you know the, the 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 some of the melody sounded familiar, and it's because I have also a 45 here from Panama, a calypso a calypso tune that uh, that is uh, actually completely uh, taking inspiration from this track. I'll play it. Later, uh, but uh, it's impressive how like they use the exact same melody as the as the the, the hook. In that song, in a in a calip in a sort of really deep calypso tune. So, but that's for the for afterwards. Okay. I love the uh, piano solo on that. Oh, that was good. so so yeah. good, yeah. And the yeah, trumpet yeah, solo yeah. right after that too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, no, it, great musician, it, it, this guy. I just discovered him, but it's uh, it's fabulous. And it's amazing that one of the sort of threads through all of this is is obviously the trumpet, uh, and also piano. You know, those two instruments seem to be featured in quite a lot of calypso caribbean music i guess it's probably because they were 
relatively easily accessible compared to maybe some other instruments? Or not? I don't know. Piano. Possibly. Yeah, I, don't, I don't even know. <laughs> not so You're much. wrong, actually. No, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would think it, it really depends. But uh, maybe in those uh, with those artists that are that were a bit more, um, what would you call it, eclectic, who were yeah. also studying Latin beats and everything, and and uh, entering this uh, this territory and trying to 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 sort of uh, diversify their, their 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 music approach and everything, because like more. I don't know about uh, I don't know enough about the roots of, of Calypso in Trinidad, but here in Panama, yeah. old school Calypsonian is really just a there's barely a, there's a few drums, definitely a, a horn section like trombone, trumpet, yeah. you name it, and then the the the, the sort of groove comes from a, a ukulele. It's not even a ukulele; they have another name, but it's it's a sort of a four string guitar that's super cheap and that you can basically build yourself at home. Um, and but piano would be something that. But it's frequent, indeed. Huh? You you hear it a lot, but that's when the when the when you have a sort of a, a, an orchestra behind it who has a, a bit of a Latin or jazz background, yeah. not just purely calypso. But that I guess that's what makes it rich as well. Huh? In that sense, we will we will have to do some more research and find out about that because I, I may be completely wrong. Um, but yeah, it's it's whether it's of some of these venues they would have had a piano and obviously it would be easy. And like you say, that the the, the guitar that you can build at home and carry because obviously getting around and they would have had to if they were proper musicians they would have had to travel to play yeah. uh, in order to to fund their lives. You know if that's if that's what they were doing. So I guess you know you're right. And then there were carry. hotels. Yeah. They were playing in hotels and casinos all the time, which is which, like was very, very common in the in the Caribbean, in all Caribbean countries at the time. And there would yeah. definitely be a piano in, a, in all of these venues. Yeah, yeah. I guess maybe that's where piano bar sort of comes from. And obviously the piano will be there. And then they just sort of added to it and sort of extended. Yeah. Cool. Okay, Sean, what have you got? Okay, so the next uh, song uh, that I have here is from The Mighty Sparrow, which I was talking about. Um, and on the back here, like you could just see um, a picture of a crowd. In the back there, I don't know if you can see it there, but the um, let me uh, just show that out. Yeah, picture of a crowd. Yeah. So yeah, you can see a, a picture of a crowd. I I don't know for sure, but I believe this crowd. It yeah, it actually looks like this is probably in Toronto because there are there are quite a few, uh, non Caribbean looking people in the back here. Um, and there's a little write up where he says, uh, I'll always remember the wonderful audience at my appearance at the Palace de Nations. Oh, it was at Expo 67. So it was in Montreal. The 20,000 odd people in the crowd were mainly Canadians, but just about every other nation on earth was representative, uh, including a massive delegation of my countrymen in exile. It was a strange audience, and not very many of them had heard true Calypso. But they were warm, wonderful people. And from the start, I knew they were with me all the way. Um, so it just goes to show, like, I guess this was possibly one of his first times traveling to North America um, where he was fully embraced. And, you know, that just goes to show, like, I mean, the the I know we were kind of talking about it earlier about how, you know, like Americans can sometimes bastardize music. But I don't necessarily say that. I think in, in other ways you can argue that uh it it makes the music more universally heard so there is some pros to that as well i feel so anyways this song uh is from this record and it's called uh mr walker so i'm gonna throw that one on for you guys <laughs> Expensive dress. The people say she ugly, but she fada full of money. Oh, oh Lord, Mama, boy, boy. Good morning, Mr. Walker. Thank you. 
nunca te fez já se abar um pouco lá She dressed a tantalize, she saying, monkey wearing me neon light, mama, boy, boy. Good morning, Mr. All right, so you kind of get the gist of that song. It's, you know, some of the lyrics back then, um, you know, they were they were trying to be funny, but obviously they don't really in today. <laughs> Today's oh, it was very cool. But yeah. You know, I think I have a cover in Spanish of this one by uh, okay. Carlos Granada, a Colombian artist that, that lived in Miami. Really? Find wow. out for episode two. Remind me, Mr. Walker. Yeah, yeah I think that. Yeah, was, yeah. I think it was a pretty popular song within the West yeah. Indies because I think uh, Byron Lee covered it. Uh, yeah, once as yeah, well, yeah. Too. The 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 tune I have by uh, Carlos Granada is um is credited to Byron Lee. Well, it's funny too because I remember like growing up, uh, we had like CDs of Sparrow that my parents always used to play, but they were, it was him like in the later years, which I could I could show you too. I have that on record, uh, but all this stuff was very comedic um yeah, like he, yeah, he yeah, yeah. It, yeah like all the lyrics were always it, it was something like it was always funny lyrics where he's making jokes about stuff i just realized too, I had very to, um, uh very good ways of bypassing the sen the censorship as well Not yeah of, uh, exactly black time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so. interesting um okay cool let me let me let me play another one then so uh Again, I don't have much, but I have a few bits that I've sort of picked up. And this is from uh, the Bahamas. And this is the big band sound of Ron Berridge and his orchestra. And it's called High Voltage. Um, and uh, yeah, we've been, been sort of relatively chilled so far. So we'll, we'll pick it up a little bit with this one, maybe. <laughs> just love that sort of Hammond organ or whatever it is that they're using in there um it just cuts through um and yeah it's a really good vibe on that one big time yeah i love that the Hammond organ on there too i was just thinking that too it's on the uh i don't know if you can see maybe the tropito oh wow yeah it's a little bit ripped on the bottom but uh I can't, for a year i can't find a year on here 
So I don't know. Oh, I never heard of Tropy Tone. Yeah, from uh, yeah, made in Barbados. It says recorded Barbados, by okay. Novel Sound, and the other side is Barbados. I love you, and it's made by West Indies Records Limited. So nice, cool. I, again, I, I can't remember where I picked that up. I must have just picked it up somewhere. Uh, but yeah, That's really cool. Yeah. Okay, Malong, we are back to you. All right. Uh, well. You know, so I was just saying how this uh, this earlier tune we were li- playing from the Bahamas just reminded me of this one, which I'm I'm pretty sure they were list- either they heard um, King Harrison or they both had the same influence and they heard a, a, a tune from even an even older song uh, that inspired them. But there's a lot of uh, very similar hooks in that uh, next Calypso, Calypso tune that I will play. Well, this is from Panama. Um, it's a band called Black Majesty and the Mighty Bamboo Band. Very, very deep Calypsonians from the, again, from the Caribbean coast here. These guys uh, would typically only sing in English. There was a lot less fusion and it's a bit more ref- uh, sort of representative of the deeper Calypso side. And um, some of their tunes, th- this one is a bit, uh, it's a bit intense. You will see it's, uh, it's called The Day I Die. So it's about, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 heavy on the on the lyrics, but they also have a bunch of uh, social conscious tunes as well. Uh, so that a bit more um, on the on the um, black power and revolutionary side of things of of Calypso for them. Yeah. So let's hear the day I die. If you hear this, this to that uh, King Harrison tune we heard before. <laughs> Dirty. I love that. telling uh, people that the day he dies uh, he wants his funeral to be an international carnival so uh, one big party deep wow i mean that that's <sighs> who i uh, you know i kind of want mine to be too, yeah right? <laughs> why not oh yeah. yeah yeah <laughs> um i mean because it's it's a you know i mean funerals are funerals aren't they and they're either very sad places they, they are obviously very sad places but they can also be a great celebration of a person's life because that's really what it's about um i i dj'd for uh i think it was this woman's 50th uh birthday party with a with a friend and she'd only sort of recovered from sort of cancer quite recently so she was celebrating 50 and then we had the pandemic and then about two years later the husband messaged me and said sadly she's died uh, we couldn't have a party during the pandemic we want a party and we want really upbeat music and that to really celebrate her life and it was really touching that you know bringing people together so what he's saying is right you know the day i die yeah. you know let's celebrate that i've been here that i've lived however long i've lived and been part of your lives and you've been part of my life you know it's, it's a really good sentiment definitely 
Absolutely, absolutely. Definitely. So yeah, let me just show you the, the yeah. label on this one. If you ever come across this, this is called Sally Ruth Records. It's it's it was a very small imprint uh, in Panama from the '60s and early '70s, and then just sort of disappeared. Um, I think another major Panamanian label bought the rights to most of their catalog, but still, those are amazing 45s. There, they, they they float around. You can find them, and this is always. I mean, just the, that label is a guarantee of quality. Of quality, it will always be Calypso, uh, Bugalu, interesting, typical Panamanian music. A lot of funk as well uh, and soul. Yeah. So yeah, highly recommended. Cool. And I was going to say, too, it kind of has like a funeral march sort of vibe to it, right? Like, yes. Like a, that's really, oh, the really tune. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 you can picture it, you know, you can picture it. Yeah. Sean, what have you got next? Um, I've got a, so uh, they are a Barbados band called the Sand Pebbles. I'm, I don't know anything about them. This was just from, I believe it was either from one of my uncle's collections that was, uh that i inherited or it, it could have been my dad's i i don't know for sure but it does say it was pressed in toronto so that's a great cover uh, <laughs> yeah so this is like th where this is a little bit different than the other stuff is this was kind of around the time when like 60s psych rock was was really popular and I guess it made its way down to the island. So this is like their interpretation of almost like like it it almost sounds similar to like Santana almost in a way. Um, so I'm going to put this on really quickly and then I, I just got to run to grab my cat because I thought he was watching this movie behind me, but he's not in here anymore. So I just want to make sure he hasn't run outside. <laughs> okay, put, put that on. Go and sort your cat. That's cool. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, he's literally right behind me right here <laughs> staring at me like a creep. Right. <laughs> okay. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that was that. Uh, I just really wanted to quickly show you two that made me laugh. On the back, they show all the, the group members. So you could see it here. So you, you see this? Okay. They, uh, I don't know their names. But at the very bottom, it shows their manager just... <laughs> Is he on a, is he, it says manager at work, Ralph <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the most ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> most ridiculous thing. And here they are all in the front. It's a cool little. Well, it's, little it's him obviously out the back of the boat, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I'm not sure health and safety would be allowed. There seems to be too many people for the size of that. Absolutely. That, that yeah. They would have capsized 100%. There's no way uh, that would Especially if they were doing that. Um, yeah, that's great. Again, a different feel. Yeah, it's, it's you not. Know, it's it, it's it, not really it, it, like so, some of the other songs on the album are more calypso based, but yeah. and there are some like even reggae songs on there too. Um, I don't know if that was just like a thing in Barbados where like they had so many different other cultures kind of living there, so that it, maybe that's why it sounded different. But um, yeah, yeah, that was really cool. cool. Right, I mentioned them earlier, <clears throat> and you said to play it, so I, I guess we we bring it almost up to date with uh, Bacow Rhythm and Steel. <clears throat> they do a lot of covers. Uh, they're based in Hamburg, um, Cambo as well. But uh, the it's just, again, the steel pan. And what they do with it is amazing because, you know, you'd think after a couple of songs it might get boring, but they keep bringing out some amazing covers. Uh, and this is the latest one. Here we go. <laughs> That was perfect for hip hop's 50th anniversary, too. Yeah, exactly. Or are they doing a cover of Leon Haywood? I don't know. Could be one or the other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, there's just something about, but I love that obviously it's Calypso music and Steel Pan has led to this sort of interpretation now that is just, you know, it just drops and you're like, yes, you know, that's, that's perfect. Um, right. We've been going about an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> we've got about half an hour left. But I think, like we said, even before we did the show, we were like, I think there's going to be a part two. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure there's plenty more music. And obviously, before the next one, I can do some digging and buy some more records. Uh, any excuse to go down another little rabbit hole? It can't be that hard out there to find this stuff, man. You guys must have a ton of this stuff in the UK. There, there, there is. And obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm saving one for the end to play you because we were talking about it earlier. And I, I spent yes. about an hour digging to try and find it. So I will play that. Um, but we're back to Milong. What have you got next? Um, we might get another one any... half an hour. We might get another three each, maybe. Two or three each, at least. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Uh, wh where do you want me to, to take you, Christos? Given that uh, there's a bit of everything here. We... <laughs> Give us some more options. Give us, again, the options of the countries. Why? And as as um, um, as Sherelle LaFunk said, uh, sharing is caring. But she said, exactly. thank you that, you know, we, we're taking them to different places around the world and that's what music does and especially this right. sort of music because it's not like you know instantly it's not from like the uk or it's not from canada or it's not from necessarily panama and it's like right we're going to go to that country so yeah take us somewhere exotic somewhere new maybe some somewhere uh, that haven't uh, we haven't uh, explored just yet today uh yeah so we were getting funky 
with the Bacala Rhythm Steel Band and the previous tune that Sean was playing and everything. So I looked at uh, what I had pulled uh, from uh, on my uh, on my, uh, on my uh, collection of LPs from Martinique and thought this would be appropriate. It's sort of a uh, uh, you will see, we'll, we'll pick up the tempo a little bit, but um, it's a typical, I mean, a typical, it's it's a cadence tune, right, of that, uh, it's this, this style uh, from the, the, the French Caribbean that you'd find in both uh, Martinique and Guadeloupe, uh, oftentimes in Dominica as well, uh, and sometimes in Haiti, but this one has a very interesting, funky uh, intro, so let's go. <laughs> So this was uh, the from Martinique, not to be mistaken with the Vikings from Guadeloupe, which is also another phenomenal band. Uh, and I think there's another one, a rock band from Costa Rica called uh, Los Vikingos as well. Um, yeah, so that was like typical cadence, that, that sound of, uh, that's very, it was very popular in Martinique and Guadeloupe in the, in the 60s and 70s, mostly in the 70s when it sort of picked up. They were rather sort of trying to rival with Soka as well on the on the yeah. tempo. Yeah, <clears throat> um, yeah. It's, it's it's just really positive, really upbeat, good feeling music, isn't it? What I loved about that too is it started out sounding like it, it almost sounded like like a Curtis Mayfield, like Isaac Hayes sort of yeah. early funk sort of sound, yeah. like a soulful funk sound, and then it just like switches right into the Soka. <laughs> Sounding yeah, great. yeah, yeah, totally. Like without warning. Yeah, that was <laughs> and it, which was a. Uh, it was very common at the time. I have a whole lot of records like that that are like this, like starting on a very either funk, soul, or disco intro, and then all of a sudden, boom, you break into a cadence, compa, sort of super Caribbean party mix, and <laughs> it's it's genius. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Right, Sean, you're up. 
Okay, so the next song I have is a record from the 70s. This is from a Trinidadian artist named Lancelot Lane. Uh, he was a pioneering Calypso and Soca musician known for his innovative fusion of genres and thought-provoking lyrics. Uh, he rose to prominence in the 1970s with his hit Blow Away, which blended traditional Calypso with elements of rock and funk. Lane's music often addressed social and political issues, challenging convention and advocating for change. And he was a key figure in the evolution of soca music, contributing to its modern sound. Um, unfortunately for Lancelot Lane, his uh, life was cut short when he was murdered in his own home in Trinidad in 1990. But his artistic legacy continues to influence Caribbean music and activism. So this is very different than uh, the more upbeat dance stuff that we had on, but still funky as ever and i love it so this is lancelot lane and this song is called you think is soft all right so let's hear this we so love to copy good and bad that defy the, the craze these days is ghetto now you tell me where we doing with ghetto the answer is simply, we don't know what a ghetto is. Usual sights all over town, all the buildings, them looking run down, and the days are hard and the nights are long, while singing one familiar song, and it's ghetto, you see? Like if thing ain't hard enough, you're trying to make things more rough. What frustration send you off? You think it's soft in a ghetto? A ghetto has to do with a certain physical environment and negative attitudes that bring on emotional insecurity. Your very reason to live could be lost, and only the survival instinct kept going. Besides a one when a rat attack, enough to give you a heart attack. From hunger, your children getting weak, and with no clothes, they had to street. Where's a freak? Like if food prices ain't high enough, you're trying to make things more tough. What frustration send you off? You think it's soft in a ghetto? Like this whole place gone mad, from top to drop. No guidance, no initiative. How you gonna feel to see a child suffer permanent brain damage from lead poisoning? Who you gonna blame? When they end up in the hands of some lawless lawman because of your neglect. When you cultivate ghetto attitudes, more women live with weaknesses in men because less men seem able to develop the strength to be men in the first place. Look man, if we must save the country, let we do it now. Talking to our fella the other day, hear what the young man had to say. Boy, I trip up on everything, but I must check out heroin. I say, what? Don't dig nothing, man. I want to be a funky junkie. And I'm hip, brother, man. When I hit the ghetto, you understand? I'm going to have a party. I want a party. Look at me, party. Party, party. Usual sights all over the world. You see, like if thing ain't hard enough, you try to make it more up. What frustration send you off? You think it's soft? That was uh, Jethro Tull on the flute. I don't know if I mentioned that, but uh, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I mean, uh, when that when that flute dropped, it, it just took it to like this completely higher <laughs> level. Both totally. him along were like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We're like, what? Like like ravers, you know. I was I was waiting to see your guys' baby. reaction because I was like, wait till the flute comes in. <laughs> yeah, That's you can amazing. just tell how like revolutionary he was as an artist. And you know, yeah. he was very political. His lyrics were very politically driven. So uh Lancelot Lane, it's it's sad that he how he went out, but uh yeah, I don't know if many people know who he is, but he's got a legacy, I feel so. I'll help them out. And it's and it's one of the things we by, by playing vinyl, we're keeping 
these legacies and these legends alive because you know if we stop playing it and you stop playing old music or or interesting music or different then it's just going to disappear isn't it so at some point people will stop buying the records and you know it'll be very uh, small people so the more people we can bring this music to okay uh i'm gonna keep it rolling we've got about 20 minutes so um this next one i think it probably does exactly what it says on the tin that's a phrase here uh i don't know if there's a phrase like that in, in panama it does exactly what it says on the tin uh this is uh calypso funk leave it there for now uh hello set jam welcome in welcome in um yeah malong you're up next keep it rolling right so we said the challenge would be to keep on traveling so i'm gonna i was about to pull some other more records from martinique and <laughs> then i thought no 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 okay we'll keep it for uh, the next episode and uh let's just uh Let's just continue the journey. Uh, this one is from Dominica. It's an island that's, uh, it's, I think it's a former British colony. Uh, it's between the French islands of Martinique and Guadeloupe, right in the middle. So they speak a, a mix of, a, of a patois in French and, uh, and English. And their music is brilliant. So it's a, they created various styles, but they were inspired by both cadence like from Martinique, Guadeloupe, Haiti, etc., and Calypso and Soca. So they created something called Cadence Lipso, <laughs> which is a fusion of all of this, right? <laughs> um, and this uh, particular tune is called uh, uh, Las Mal Parle, which means you, you, you know, stop talking bad about or bad mouthing me or something like this by the swinging stars of Dominica. And it's on a British, uh, it was reissued recently on a, a British label called Sofrito. Who specializes yeah. in in tropical stuff uh, and i just i just love it for me that's like a, a party starter every time so let's go <laughs> Sure, 
Sound of Funk, we haven't played music from Suriname just yet. Might be my last tune. We'll get one in, we'll get one in. Si ma pani ma jayo, que tu show sa mwe pani. Si ma pani la jayo, que tu show sa mwe pani. Si mwe pani la jayo, que tu show sa mwe pani. Old tight Monique. Dominica seems like an amazing island. Right. So that was Las Mal Parle by the swing, Swinging Stars of Dominica. Yeah, I, I love this tune. It's just uh, it's been repressed uh, a while ago by uh, Sofrito, and it's just it's always in my uh, in my bag. It's a, it's a great label. I've got quite a few things from uh, from that label as well. Uh, it's a fantastic label. Uh, Sean, I think you're up next. We can probably do, yeah, so two more. I think we can probably squeeze in two more. Uh, Malone yeah, one. I just had one more to be honest with you. I'm I'm good. You guys can squeeze. Okay, cool. Yeah. You do one more. I'm, I want to get. <laughs> okay, you do one. I'll do one. Malone can do last one, and then I'll do like a joke one at the end there you go i love it um so the last one that i've got picked out is to kind of like end my um showcasing of the evolution of of calypso music yeah because i want to say like from here like even a lot of the modern stuff that's out nowadays sounds similar to this so this is uh byron lee and the dragonairs <laughs> Uh, this is from the the early 80s, uh, 1981, I want to say. It, it doesn't say on the back here, but, you know, there's a lot of ass on this. <laughs> Lovely LP cover, yeah. My my parents always had these CDs at home, and as a kid, I would always just see, like, they always had, like, these women wearing scandalous, like, bikinis. So I just remember as a kid always being, like, curious about what the hell is on this CD. <laughs> But that's just how things were, you know, that's how things are on the islands, too. So they're just having fun. And um, this is where I want to say Calypso music stopped really like they had a lot more electronic uh, instruments being used, synthesizers like it, it was more disco sounding um, yeah. mixed with Calypso and Soka. So to make Soka. So um, this is, like I said, Byron Lee and the Dragonairs, who is also even known uh, from uh, very early on as from doing um, uh, like early reggae music too, right? Like a lot of ska stuff was was being put out by Byron Lee in the early days. So, anyways, this is this is uh, Byron Lee and the Dragonairs, and the song is Nani Wine, Nani Wine. Okay, here we go. <laughs>
So that's that. And if you're wondering, wine is not, they're not talking about the drink wine. They're talking about <laughs> something real low. <laughs> I know. <clears throat> wine, your body. Yeah. Uh, big shout out to Ms. Monique. Uh, she's joining us in London for a We Love 45 London uh playing alongside dj fade and loads of other great djs so fade <clears throat> i will um i will uh, i'll talk to her about it and yeah here we go so you track down the 45 for her yeah bring it to london definitely definitely that'd be cool uh right so earlier on before the show we did a little test with sean and i was telling sean that i was looking for this record that i wanted to play and he was like, what record is one and i was like oh it's this one and he's like, oh man you've got to play that you've got to play that so it took me about an hour to sort of go through all of this and it was in a box up there which i could have reached first but i missed but anyway so this is from a tv show um back in the 89 to 94 wikipedia is telling me uh called desmond's and uh, this is the theme tune to that uh, which is re-released recently on uh, it says local records where i'm pretty sure it's happy records here in the uk but anyway here we go from the long water next to the ocean breeze to the damp and to the rain of London City. We come from the sun to live in the cold. I miss the rum. I want my coconut tree. Don't scratch my soca. Till the water is over. Let's keep the music sweet. Wind up your waist and feel Don't the scratch my soca. I can't believe you have that on vinyl, man. <laughs> That's incredible. Now, you, well, I don't know if this is going to work. Let's see if I can get this to work. Here we go. From the long water lakes to the ocean breeze to the dump and to the rail of London City. We come from the sun to live in the cold. I miss the rum. I want my coconut tree. Don't touch my soca. I love that it said French lessons by Tricks Weston. <laughs> yeah. um, it was, it what was based kind of in French a lessons are we talking about? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. I remember that show as a kid, though. Like, I there was a character on the show named Sean, and I just remember okay. like my parents and and cousins always used to watch that show. Right. Did you? We were talking earlier about you having some BBC shows on CBBC. There was a yeah, like it might not have necessarily been from BBC, but yeah, there, yeah. we did get like a lot of British uh, programming because we have a lot of British people yeah. living here too, right? So yeah, yeah. There was a, there's a comedian called Sean Hughes from Ireland, and he did a show called Shawnee's Show. I don't know if that oh. went across to Canada or not. That I don't. I've never heard of that one. Okay. Desmond's I. Like I, I remember we got my I think we got my dad the show on DVD, not realizing it was in PAL and it won't okay. work on our DVD players. So <laughs> it's just sitting there. I still haven't watched a, an episode since it aired in like the 90s here in Canada. Yeah. And uh, as DJ Fade says, rest in peace, Norman Beaton. And obviously, he does. Oh. He does that song. He does that song. But yeah. OK. Uh, Malong. Last one right. for tonight. Like we said, we're going yeah. to do a part two. We have to do a part two. Definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely, as soon as possible. Now, I was just, uh, Sean, I was showing you the this uh, Kanchan uh, LP. We were talking about Chutney uh, Soka earlier, and this is like very, very 80s uh, bouncy uh, Soka song by uh, by Kanchan in in a very, uh, very uh, Indian style, and especially the Nani Wine, the tune you played. Her version is is very, um, I don't know, you, part two. This is like the closer to the chutney that I know of, like that we play in our right. family and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then, uh, well, yeah, I was showing you another record earlier, uh, Mania Mania by Fruko. And this is just a little teaser. It's just to get Christos excited about part two because <laughs> I, I will not play it tonight. 
<laughs> I'm going to close this with a, a tune from Suriname, as promised. Uh, this one is called uh, uh, Frijone Kizi, Frijone Teki by a band called Oppo. I recently found out that they were actually a theater troupe who decided to start a band and everything. And it's, it's one of my favorite tunes from Suriname. It's very deep. It's not in the usual uh, typical Kazeko style, which is very pop popular in, um, in Suriname, which we can also discuss in, in part two or part three, perhaps. Um, but it's, uh, it has this very, very distinctive, deep jazz sound, uh, island jazz, right, uh, of the, of the late, late 50s, I would say. Um, even though it's probably more recent than this, but anyway, let's just hear this. But and it is in Sranam, in the the Surinamese dialect. Awesome. <laughs> that was brilliant. Pretty deep, huh? This one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As uh thing else I have in uh in uh, in Surinamese music. Uh it has this uh, I don't know what it, it sounds militant. I mean I don't understand yeah. Srana. Again, it's a mix of of various uh, different dialects, etc. But I, I hear them talking about economy, you know, economy and I, I can yeah sort of uh, of uh how would you call it? Uh, of a uh, very like politically driven. That's yeah, right. Can, yeah, 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 right. Kind of hell, yeah. Okay. Well, it's been amazing. We we always like to end on a light uh, note, and uh, this is a song that uh, the not the original, but one one of the more popular versions. Uh, I play a little bit, and my daughter plays, and then I was telling Malong about this record. Uh, we were in Brighton. I think it was the We Love Forty Fives, the second one we did in Brighton. And DJ One of a Kind came along and he said, "I've got a record. I'm going to play you. You're going to love it." Um, but he saved it till the end. Um, and it's a, a Panamanian record, a Panamanian cover. Um, and yeah, this will leave you on a good note. I hope. <laughs> Mano, mano. Tu, tu. 
There we go. There we go. So that was. Uh... <laughs> I didn't know that they had a cover of that. That's awesome. It's a I'm brilliant gonna, tune. Uh, by Los Dynamicos del Ritmo. And uh, yeah, on the, on the other side is Skokian, which is also pretty good. Um, yeah. yeah. And the notorious for, for being uh, amazing funk players, uh, the Los Dynamicos del Ritmo in Panama. It's actually a very uh, sought after band am among diggers here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I had to get it from, I, I'm not sure it was Panama or somewhere, but I had to get two copies to make it worthwhile for the thing. And it, it, I couldn't <laughs> find course. anything else that took my fancy. So I got two copies, but on different labels. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so let's make a deal. Episode two of this Caribbean special, I will uh, I will open with yes. Mania Mania by Fruko, which is another version of Mana Mana, but uh, Colombian style. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but these are two labels. So so it is Caribbean. So this, this is that... Emily. This is one Emily on this label. Chris, I was the one that you played started out with playing like the Adams Family, right? It the... was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it went into the yeah. I was like, wait, is that the Adams family? I mean, maybe. Maybe there's a Calypso Adams family cover somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. For sure. We might have to dig. Right. I'm going to set the raid. We're going to go into uh, Slow Mo Monday. Dr. Bresty Cray's on at the moment. And then I'm on at 11. So <clears throat> I'm sure I'm going to end up playing a couple of these at Slow Mo. So if anyone's still around, I'm playing on from 11. But uh, in the meantime, we'll go and see Dr. Bresty Cray. But yes, I think. Uh, <clears throat> definitely a part two maybe even a part three 100 percent. we have we can, i'm sure you've both got more records i can get more records and so we just go from that but uh yeah thank you so much for both being on the show it's been amazing you could play uh, bacow steel rhythm band like is like you could just do a whole entire set on that yeah i would love that man <laughs> i could just do every, that <laughs> every song and cover that they do like blows my mind away yeah i think there's there was another one which i picked out which is uh they do a cover of space uh, oh yeah is um and also raise it up is on the flip and they're both really Ooh. cool um we are i'm planning an event in hamburg we love 45's hamburg next year maybe july august um and they're obviously based in hamburg so i'm thinking maybe if we could tie that in with a gig that they're playing at we'd get to see them because i missed them in london sadly um but yeah and as sherella funk says even the muppet show covers this song exactly exactly <laughs> but um yeah thank you so much guys uh if you hang on there for a minute we will uh we'll raid out in a second um i might do a pop-up tomorrow otherwise i'm back on wednesday part of my journey episode 35 my very special guest is rival self uh we're going to be talking mental health uh he's going to be discussing tape looping and scratching and his album that's coming out uh and also we're going to be talking about some deep stuff like adhd and some breakdowns and the things that he's had so an interesting show. Hope you can join us on Wednesday and watch out for part two of this show. Malong, Sean, thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. It was a thank pleasure. You.